All right, it's time. <coughs> Fire Festival. Hi there. Wait, guys, wait. Can I have a pee break? Don't get mad at me. <coughs> I'll play your guys' favorite intro song. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry. I hope everyone else who took a pee break is also back by now. Song's over. Time for the video. <clears throat> I did wash my hands! Hi there. With my favorite You're probably wondering soap. how I got this mm. tan. Well, let me tell you the story. It begins with a man by the name of Billy McFarlane. <coughs> Billy was a good boy. At the 22, he had dreams of toast. becoming a super wealthy entrepreneur, dropping out of college to start a business called Magnesis. Magnesis. Over the years, he managed to network with, with some something. powerful people. One of them was Ja Rule. Translated from German, I believe it means, yes, Rule. Over drinks, he pitched an idea. Here's an accurate recreation of that event. Mr. Rule, he said, I have a brilliant idea. Like, word, like, yo, what happened? Ooh. I'm like, yo, this thing came out, fucking the fish. Ooh, ooh. Precisely, great minds think alike. It will be two weeks of absolute luxury in the Bahamas. I. Mm. 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 Oh Promotion began in late 2016. Oh Fire promised beaches, ladies, gourmet food, luxury villas. Hosted on a private island in the Bahamas called Fire K, once owned by Pablo Escobar. VIP tickets up to $250,000. Swimming pigs. Blink-182. Major laser. A steel drum. Welcome to Fire Festival. The best two damn weeks of your life. I bought my ticket immediately. Nice. The day arrives. About 5,000 people are making their way directly from Miami Airport, <laughs> and there are huge delays to get to Fire K. Although I shouldn't say Fire K, because it doesn't exist. In the marketing, they referenced this island, which is actually Norman's K, run by George Jung, not Pablo, by the way. But that doesn't matter, because we're not going there either. We're going to Great Exuma. Private island? Forget that. Population? 7,000. In fact, we're basically in the parking lot of a Sandals resort. In the end, only about 500 of us make it to the island. The remaining customers' flights oh God, are cancelled. You're about to see why. We hauled onto a school bus Mr. and taken to the site. A gravel lot with a bunch of FEMA tents. Oh no! Remember those promises of luxurious villas? Pranked you. Enjoy your stay. And don't forget your complimentary cup of UNICEF rice. Once there, no one knows whose tent belongs to whom, so staff try getting everyone into a line. Then they abandon that idea and tell everyone it's a free-for-all. Oh no! Expecting a party, this guy took all of his drugs on the flight over. He's the only one having any fun. He's having a good time! Everyone else is grumpy because it's been five hours and there's no food. In lieu of food, staff decide to start handing out tons of free tequila. Why this only would exacerbates you do that? Problems. Once the food does arrive, it's just as delectable as promised, though. Gourmet craft single there. A few hours later, bags arrive on a shipping container. It was getting dark and there was no lighting. So everybody's walking around with their cell phones trying to look for their, their luggage. Oh Plenty of people had their luggage stolen. But don't worry, if you have any valuables, the festival advertised top-notch security. Here it is. But no one told guests they had to provide their own lock. There are rumors of <laughs> muggings by the, the locals. I heard rumors of feral dogs. A tent supposedly caught fire. <laughs> the closest beach has a rampant shark problem. Staff don't have any uniforms or walkie-talkies. So no one knows who's in charge, and the people who are in charge can't talk to each other. Here's the nice. bathroom. Ew! Many staff quit after only a couple of hours. For the few customers who are willing to just make the most of it and enjoy the music, they had some bad news too. All of the major musical acts pulled out. 
In fact, Major Lazer wasn't even confirmed to go in the first place. Oh no. The event was promoted as cashless, so all people had were these useless Disney bucks on their fireband, which meant they couldn't buy anything or catch a cab if they were stranded. And even with only 500 people, there are too few tents and beds, so everyone is just stealing each other's. And for any of you thinking you could just escape to the sandals, bad luck. It's peak season and they are absolutely full. People are reaching out to the embassy for help. After a few hours, most people chose to go back to the airport, and the rest were forced back home when the Bahaman <laughs> government stepped in. Oh the festival Lord. was closed. But the exodus from the island made its own problems. Another fucking they half a hotel hours, dehydrated reference. and Jesus hung Christ. over in a hot building. Why staff locked the door isn't entirely known. But one girl fainted before they were finally reopened. Everyone gets home, and that was the end of it. Except for uh, me. I was um, uh, rescuing someone, helping them out, and uh, I got Mr. lost Victorian. in the woods. Anyway, <laughs> back at home, the shitstorm on social media was just ramping up. The Reddit R Fire Festival was created, and it started documenting everything that went wrong at the event. <clears throat> People were circulating a fake tweet by Jar that the whole thing was a social experiment. Some wholesome festival memes there. And it quickly turned into the a marketing case study of what not it's to do. All connected. In response, Fire started serving cease and desist letters to stop people from saying mean things about them. <laughs> Mr. Rule released an official statement online, both apologizing and saying that it's not his fault. Interestingly, he wasn't even on the island at the time. He was giving a concert in Chicago. Mm. Although, to their credit, they offer everyone a full refund. Or you could always let it ride and opt Why in so for serious, tickets 2018's Fire Festival. And a VIP ticket to next year's Fire Festival. Next year. <laughs> if they decide to next go. year's nice. Next year. <laughs> Meanwhile, Billy is on full damage control. He claims that a storm came in the night before and changed all of the marketing into lies. We got what? to a point that we were very excited about on Wednesday night with how the two sites looked and we got hit by a big storm. Scammer. But the apologies weren't scammer, enough. Scammer. A few days later and the first lawsuit was served. Attorney Ben Mycelis doesn't think it's funny. <laughs> He's filed a $100 million class action lawsuit against the organizers. Then another suit. Then seven more. Then the feds got involved, claiming Billy had committed wire fraud, serious charges with serious prison time. More on that later. But first, Right now, let's go Billy into the history Billy seems like a cool guy, Fire Rich. Festival. Stop. No, Rich, no. Why would you say that? Why would you say this? Is this where OTK is heading in like five years? The marketing was clever. To get the word out, they got in touch with about 400 <coughs> influencers, Instagram celebrities, and they offered them VIP tickets or cash to promote the event. They even managed to get Kendall Jenner to post about it. Rumor has it she was paid a quarter of a million oh dollars God. for this post. The marketing worked though. The festival <laughs> sold out. One true con. We are never having OTK con or OTK festival. Don't give them any ideas, dude. Please stop. I'm actually gonna start crying. Oh no, that would be such a shit show. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so how did it go so wrong? Let's start with the money. During the planning process, a consultant came in and said the festival would cost $50 million no. and require another year of organization. This is after they made all the promises. And they had nothing near that amount. So they started cutting expenses way back. Remember those luxury villas? They were going to cost $10 million alone. So they scrapped them. Now everyone gets a tent. Yay. Deposits for the bands? Nope. Food, infrastructure, Yay. staff? All were cut back. But, you may ask, Yay. how did they have so little cash if they sold out? It's the price. It was way too low. Now wait a minute. Up to $250,000 a ticket is too low. In fact, on social <coughs> media, people were so merciless and unsympathetic towards the guests because they thought it was a bunch of rich kids paying for tickets with a starting price of $12,000. And you can thank fake news for that assumption. That's what you I heard You see that number repeated everywhere. But actually, very few were paying even close to that amount. The standard price was around $1,200. 
Which, if you think about two weeks in the Bahamas that with practically really all of your expenses low. taken care of, that's pretty bloody good. That is fact, really fucking low. some tickets low. were as low as $500. Six months ago, got together and got the early bird special for about 500 bucks. 500 dollars for two weeks in the Bahamas? And you're supposed to stay in a... Holy sh... Okay, I would know that... I feel like people would know that's a scam, though. I don't know. And somewhere to sleep. How on earth were they gonna break even with that? Oh shit. They weren't. Minecraft and historian. on the flip side, there's no proof whatsoever that anyone purchased a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar ticket. So basically, they're <coughs> stuffed. Billy has to start taking tough short-term loans just to keep afloat. Which, by the way, is why they did the fire bans. It was to raise cash. It's reported that up to two million dollars in Firebucks in-game currency was spent in the lead-up to the event. What? But this wasn't even close to enough. <clears throat> Practically broke and with the event only a few weeks Riches. away. Wait. No! No! Why did you use the picture with the fucking ball pit? No! <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, it's, it's not happening, there is no OTK con, it's not real, stop. The more experienced staff suggested <laughs> postponing, but thanks to those short term loans he couldn't, so he insisted on going forward. Both oh staff tried Lord. to control the damage by telling celebrities and public figures not to go. <coughs> <laughs> Yikes. So, Billy and Jar are in some serious trouble. But, let's please have one failed festival that has a sequel. Well, <laughs> one true Billy is out on $300,000 bail. His assets were frozen <laughs> as at May 18th. He dropped his expensive attorneys. He's selling his property in New York. He tried to sell Magnesis for 150 <laughs> grand, but it was cancelled for being fraudulent. Massively in debt and with no hope of paying it back. Fire went into involuntary bankruptcy. Oh my god. And that is the end of Fire Festival. I'll keep you posted about whether Billy is going to jail. So sad. So long, Fire Festival. April 8th. You were too beautiful for this world. And as for me, well, it's time to go home. You are- wait, wait, Zoyle, wait! Zoyle, that was not me in your chat this morning. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I swear that was not me. It was some- it was someone else on my account. It wasn't me. I didn't say that you're irrelevant. And I didn't- that was someone else. That wasn't me. It wasn't me. No! Jeff, stop! Stop. <laughs> Stop. Oh, how nice. Um, oh no. That wasn't me, Zoil, I swear. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the video's over. Despair. Oh. <clears throat> There's gotta be more we can watch. So many choices. What about going camping at the end of the world? Thoughts? Balloon boy? We'll watch one more. We'll watch one more and then it's gaming time. <coughs> Does that sound fair? Or do you guys hate me?